Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at installing the Reese weight distribution system on a 2014 GMC Yukon Denali. So the great part about a weight distribution system is it's actually got multiple benefits. And the first one a lot of people look at is gonna be the added tr uh, tongue weight as well as your gross trailer weight. It is gonna bump that up. And really that's accomplished by evenly distributing the weight between the axles of the trailer as well as the towed vehicle. So it's gonna take that weight here off the tongue, which is really nice. So it's gonna give you actually a better ride overall. As we saw on our vehicle, it actually kind of raised the front back to a normal level rather than pitching it forward. So you're gonna get better traction on the front, better steering overall, and just a better ride quality while towing. Now, if you're looking to add a little bit more control and a little bit better towing experience, you can actually get some of the sway out of your trailer by two different ways. You can add a dual cam sway setup, and that's gonna go on the rear here and push that weight kind of back it's going to set that back on the trailer allowing it to kind of hold that in place a little bit more now there's also an adjustable anti-sway bar here and that's going to kind of just go from this portion of our hitch and mount to the trailer and that's just going to create friction to slow down any of that sway that way it has something holding it kind of tight as it's going down the highway reducing that quick movement that sway can happen quickly on now, something that I really like about this system in general is not only the benefits you get, but also these chain links are actually gonna allow you to fine tune to what weight you actually have loaded up on the trailer. So it's gonna give you that extra added support and dialing this up or down based on the weight is gonna allow you to really get that fine tune exactly where you need it. To begin our installation, we're gonna wanna have our trailer as well as our vehicle on flat level ground and disconnected. You're also going to want to get your trailer level as possible by adjusting your jack and having your level available to make sure that you do have it properly aligned. Once level, you're going to want to measure from the ground to the bottom portion of your coupler. So here we have ours right at 17 inches. And this is gonna vary depending on the trailer that you have. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is measure from the top of your trailer receiver tube opening to the ground and make sure you keep track of that measurement. So ours here is gonna be 23 inches and that's gonna help us determine if we need a rise or a drop on our shank. Now, this trailer in particular is relatively low, so having a shank with adjustability to be able to put our mount low is gonna be a lot better to get this all leveled out. Now, you're also going to want to make sure that you get a ball for your actual coupler that you're using. So ours is a two inch, so we've gone ahead and got a two inch ball here. Now, if you have a one inch diameter, there's actually gonna be a coupler here that's going to allow that to tighten up in here. Or if you go with an inch and a quarter, it's gonna be the perfect diameter to actually sit in here without that coupler. So once you have that in place, you're gonna to wanna to torque this to the manufacturer spec. Now it can get a little bit tricky sometimes and to help you out, you can actually temporary bolt this onto your shank, put this to the side, and that way you can get a wrench here as well as your torque wrench to torque it down to proper spec. But once you have your ball, we're going to actually mount this up on our shank here, and that way we can kind of get a baseline and adjust as necessary to make sure that our height is gonna match our coupler. Now, I've gone ahead and just kind of eyeballed roughly where this should be um, and kind of where our ball's gonna sit in the coupler. And I've determined that I'm gonna go one hole up. Now, before we run our bolts in, you're gonna also wanna check to see how your, tr your mount here goes onto your shank. And if there's a little bit of play, which I can slide mine on here and there's kind of slacking around, there's actually gonna be this plate here. And that's just gonna tighten it up just a little bit. So if you would need to, you can actually put this in place and we'll go ahead and we're going to take our shorter bolt here and we're going to just run that through our bottom oh well, our hole that we've determined to be our starting point then on the back side we're actually going to take our split washer here put that on and then follow it up with our nut. I'm just gonna kind of hand tighten that on. 
Next, we're going to see that we have some tilt here, and this is gonna be able to be adjusted by these actual grooved washers. So this is gonna allow you to adjust that tilt a little bit. Um, I've gone ahead and kind of messed with ours a little bit to kind of get that fine tuning in. So once you kind of determine the tilt that you want, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna run this through, and these teeth are just gonna bite into here. You're gonna go ahead on the back side and put the teeth facing in towards those grooves. Follow up with your split washer as well as your nut. And then once you kind of find where you actually want it, you can kind of sandwich these together so to hold it in place. And then you can use your impact to tighten this down before torquing it down to proper spec. Now to check if your ball is actually at the right height in the adjustment of the shank, you're gonna want to take that 17 inches that we got or whatever your measurement is from the ground to the coupler and you're gonna add one to two inches. So going from the ground here, we can see that where it's actually going to sit in the coupler here, we're looking at right at about 19 inches. So that's gonna put us at a good spot. So we're gonna work with that and the next thing we're gonna to want to do is actually back this up and get this attached to our coupler. Now before lowering your trailer onto your actual ball, let's go ahead and get some baseline measurements to see where the vehicle's sitting on the wheel wells here. So measuring from the center of the wheel from the ground up, we're gonna see our rear is gonna be right at 37 inches. Now our front wheel measurement is gonna be right about 36 inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and make write those down so we can compare those later. So now you can go ahead and lower your trailer onto the actual vehicle, raise that jack up so we have that tongue weight actually pushed down on our shank. So now we have that tongue weight fully resting on the vehicle. We can see it sagging already. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some measurements now. And our rear was originally 37. We're sitting at about uh, 34 and a quarter in the rear. And our front has actually raised up as to be expected. The vehicle's sagging that back end down so the front raises and so it's just a hair under 37. So now at this point, this is where you're gonna determine where you're gonna mount your actual bracket to. Now, this one's gonna be a little bit different in the fact that our neighbor actually came in and they have theirs already welded on. So we're gonna be using theirs as it is kind of already permanently affixed, but you're gonna to want to make sure that when you mount yours, you're going from the center of your coupler here and it's gonna be 30 inches. So ours, you can see, it's pretty close to that. Um, as it centers out, it's more like 30 and a half, but that shouldn't cause too much of an issue. So what you'll do is you'll have your bracket here. And this is simply going to clamp onto your frame. And you have this bolt here, a square headed bolt, and this is going to actually feed in and clamp down on your actual trailer. So again, if your trailer is open, you'll just simply slide this over the frame at that 30 inch mark. And you're gonna just tighten down this square head bolt until it's tight against the frame. And then you're gonna wanna go back to the manufacturer's recommendations to their specifications to make sure that this is properly placed in and secure. And once you have that mounted, you're gonna go ahead it and do it on the other side. Now, the way this works is very simple. It looks just like this and it's gonna operate the same here um, slightly different but you'll see you have this little hook here that's where your chain is actually going to go and when you raise this up it's going to put that tension kind of lock in place now this one has a hole here that you can actually run a pin through and that's going to keep it locked this one does as well it's just a small hole that when it's placed back is going to lock this so same concept it's doing the same exact thing yours is going to be very similar um, but unfortunately today we are working with this bracket that's already mounted up so we're not able to show you this but it'll be a similar process 
So now you're going to want to grab your bars and you'll have the U-bolt in your kit as well as flat washers and these nuts. And we'll just loop our chain through this. Now make sure it's in this orientation here with that curve facing this way. And go ahead and tighten these down. You're going to want to have about three threads hanging out and that should be properly tightened. So go ahead and do that on both of your bars. So now you're gonna go ahead and actually get your bars in place on the hitch. And you're gonna see this bottom portion will need to go in first. And then there's gonna be this slot for it to actually feed in. And then once you move it, it's gonna kind of hold that in place. So to get it in here, I'm gonna just kind of bend this back. And then that should just kind of slide in. And then moving my bar forward, should kind of get this seated up. Now, we are gonna be raising the trailer. So if, as long as you have it in a position where that arm's gonna stay in place, you should be good. So go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So now make sure that your ball is actually locked into your coupler here, and we're gonna go ahead and raise this up. We're gonna to try to get as much tension off of our ball as possible, and that's gonna make it a lot easier to get these bars in place. your chains are actually gonna offer some adjustability. And what you're looking for is it to be a nice tight latch up, not too overly tight, but also when it's in place, you should also have these bars relatively parallel to the frame of the trailer. So holding on to our loop here, we're gonna take the pipe that's supplied in the kit. We're gonna go ahead and that's just gonna kinda lock in place like that. We'll go ahead and do that on the other side. Now, anytime you are latching or unlatching, you're gonna wanna make sure that it is raised up and not having that pressure on your ball as this is gonna be highly tensioned. So raising that up is gonna make it a lot looser, a lot easier, and a lot safer. Now, once it is latched in place, like I said, there is gonna be a slot to put this in to lock it. So you'll see this is our device here. We'll just feed this through our hole and that's gonna go through the center as well. And then once that's in place, that's gonna hold it in. So I'm gonna do the same on ours here. So based on the tension, really locking this into place and the bars being roughly parallel with the frame, I think we're set up pretty well. So the next thing we're gonna do is actually raise our jack up and let this rest. Now with our trailer actually supported and our arms actually working, we can see that our trailer is still level. Now, if yours is not, it might be a good time to make a few more adjustments to finally get that fine tuned in. So now that it's supporting it, we're gonna go ahead and get some measurements on the vehicle and see the difference it's made. Previously weighted down, we were at 34 and a quarter on the rear. So let's see where we're at now. We're at about 36, so that's pretty good. You're getting an inch and three quarter difference in the rear. Now let's check the front. And this is putting us right at 36, which is where we started before having the trailer on there. So you can see right away that the bars are doing that supporting and really leveling that vehicle out. So that's a good sign as well when adjusting your weight distribution is trying to get this front measurement back to that factory height. So once you're happy with your setup, everything's level and everything's looking well, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is actually unhook the trailer and make sure that you again are actually untensioning it by raising that jack up, uncoupling this, and then you're gonna go back and torque your bolts down to the manufacturer's recommendations using a torque wrench. Now, if you don't have a torque wrench, we have those here at eTrailer. Generally, you can rent them at an auto parts store, but that's gonna make sure that the tension on those bolts isn't too tight, stressing out the threads, but it's also not gonna become loose over time. And that was a look and installation of the Reese weight distribution system. Now we're gonna actually talk to our neighbor, Steven, to get his input to see what needs he needed and how this is gonna solve those. Hey guys, we have Steven here who actually came in looking for a little bit of a way of making it easier and safer to actually haul his horse behind him here in his Yukon. So Steven, why don't you tell us a little bit about why you brought yourself up to E-Trailer and uh, kind of the problems you were having. Well, I heard E-Trailer is one of the best places you can bring your vehicle if you want safety and performance. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a horse that I like to trailer all around and I want to be safe on the highway with him. Awesome, cool. Yeah, so Steven came in here and we were looking at just some like airbags in the back of the Yukon, right? Because we were seeing some pretty big Big, you know tongue weight issues dropping down that back of the Yukon making it a lot you know very unsafe to drive unsafe. so yeah, yeah so the car was like at an angle like that. 
just a little rough. Right. Yeah, that, which ain't good, right? We all know how it can be, even just in a normal trailer getting behind here, and we got a lot of weight. So instead of going with those airbag system that was gonna raise up just the back of the truck here, we're gonna make it a lot safer of actually hauling that trailer behind us by using a weight distribution system. So that sounds great. I'm awesome. excited about it. So let's uh, kind of learn about it together here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna clip back up real fast. Alrighty, so what we have here today is, of course, our Reese Weight Distribution Center, as you guys are all pretty aware of here. And what we're doing basically with it is we're going to be distributing that weight, that tongue weight that we're having. So the issue we run into is when that tongue weight is on one point of focus, physics kind of gets in the way, makes it really hard to steer because already we're lifting the front of the vehicle up and that front of the trailer is also up, which makes it really squirrely, really hard to control. So what we're doing, distributing that weight, as the name suggests, to a little bit towards the back of the trailer and towards more of the front of the vehicle, overall performing our handling, making it safer. So first step first, we're actually gonna have to lower our jack here. So Stephen, Wait, why let me go start the car. Yeah, there we go. Great. Okay. Alrighty. So we're going to lower that jack. And what, think I should put that would actually be awesome. That was the only other tip I was going to say. So this block can make it a lot easier because then we have a lot less travel time. And what we're doing here is we're taking that tension right off of our tongue weight. Otherwise, these arms are pretty loaded. If I were to back this off, that could smack me, do some real damage. So we don't right. want to do that. We're right. going gonna to mitigate all that issue that so we're going to have. Is, uh, all balanced right there. And yep. We've got this on. We're going to go. Yep. Let that guy run down and we're going to be taking that weight off. I look forward to uh, when trucks are passing me. Stick that guy over there for now. Great. How about the other one for me? Yeah, we'll just show him the side okay. if that's I mean, Unless you want to do the whole thing, but no, it's up to you, great. Steven. That'll help me. That's great. So, cool. feel a little so we're going to try and take up as much as we can without messing the suspension of our what about that? truck there. It's still locked in? Yep, that's okay. Leave it locked in? Yeah, we're going to leave it locked in for now. Oh, it's blowing it up? Yep, we're not going to go too high. That looks good to me. How about okay, we good. go? Shane, how you feel? A little more up? So an easy way to tell too is how much suspension lift we're getting on the back of your vehicle there, Steven. Oh, wow. So I think we're looking Amazing. pretty good there. So. If we were to move this without taking that off, again, that tongue weight's pushing all that trailer weight down on you, right? And that's creating your tension. So now we need to do, take our handy dude prior rod here. We're gonna be inserting it. So we released. Yep. So we released all that tension there, right? On our tongue. We have enough tension? Oh yeah, we're good. So really? we're, we're still gonna have a little bit there. So you wanna make sure you're clear. What about this piece right here? We're gonna need to take that coupler out. Look at you, look at go, Stephen. Already learning on the fly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, I, I didn't even. He's teaching to, me. I didn't have to go to YouTube. You didn't. No. Okay. All right. So <laughs> we're just gonna pop this guy back. You want to come on this side and do it, or you want to do it for you? No, I'm gonna watch from here. All right. It like sounds that. good. So we're just gonna back it off here. Not too crazy, as we can see, because we took that tension off. Now we can go ahead and drop those guys. So talking about that chain is that we had here, right? If we were to go in back and hook it back up, right. If you don't have the horse in the trailer, you can probably just go to this first link here. You're still gonna get really good distribution. Now you're not gonna see as much control as you're looking for. You could go to that second one. Right. And I think Shane and I have been talking about calculating it for your horse, probably that second and maybe that third link if you're needing it. And that's one kind of advantage and that you're having with the chain. If I need it or not. So you're gonna see that dip in your vehicle, right? You're trying to get it as parallel as you can if you're seeing too much lift on the front of your right. vehicle. That means you're going too low on your chain. You need to go one more up. But if you're seeing too much dip in the back, of your vehicle and you get one more down does that make sense you seem follow it. me on there no awesome great so cool so in the uh okay great so yeah, now, man. the next one would be the next one would be the exact same one you want to try and, around uh, will these things fly out of here or so what? we were looking at you, them what do you think uh you could crimp them a little bit more if you wanted or we could even get you a cotter pin later on maybe a little bit easier to get in or one of those pins that uh yeah, yeah exactly that, yep these kind of pins yes sir okay so i'm gonna go like this or like this in here? on that uh i would I would, this one? Maybe the other one. This I'm one? not too sure. Right I think here. that one's good. And then just watch your leg. Oh, I see. So it just has a little like, bit of a jerk. Just a little bit of a jerk, and then you're good. And those chains will drop down. Great. And this could be awesome. And if we wanted to, we could take these guys out. We have that little channel there. And all we got to do, find that uh, guy. That's what I'm 
looking for. That's that was my question. Yep. Oh wow. So you got to make sure that that channel is all lined up, and then wow. you can just walk it right out, right? So, oh, I see. So this channel, how, how are you going to make sure that it's lined up when I come back and uh -huh. load the trailer? I'm going to go like this. Yep. I'm going to go bottom in. Then that guy's going to go in, and as we spin it, right? See how it won't walk out because it's going to so be towards gonna be, here. But over here, will. So right. Got to spin it in. Yes, sir. A little bit more. There we go. And at this point, too, you know, we could take these arms out and then we can actually take and store this in your garage or wherever else you might be storing this. Right. Obviously, we're going to want to drop on our jack a little bit, take our coupler off. So this does need to be up high before. Mm -hmm. uh, so now I'm going to go. Awesome. There it goes. Yeah, that looks good to me. Good. And then all we'd have to do, pop off that coupler and... Uh, yeah, so I usually have a little hammer. Yeah. Um, I have a hammer in... If, or can I use this maybe? Sure, if you want to go the full way or we... You know, yeah, we're looking to go. Yeah, we're going to need a... I think a... We can lower it down a little bit more if you want to. There you go. Awesome. Sweet. Yeah, and then you're good to go, right? And then if you wanted to... And then I would disconnect. Take that hitch out and store it as well with the rest of your tow bar. So. I would go up higher, move forward, right? Yep. And then... I see. And then so unhook your hitch. already adjusted for... And that's that. all ready to go for you, and that's set for your trailer height. Now, later on, if you were to get a different trailer, maybe right. do a little, you know, swapping around, that's going to require moving all those big bolts but they're they're torqued down ready to go for your setup today I'll so be, i'll be back out here yeah. exactly we're gonna help you out so anytime we'll see if i'll need those extra shots but at this point you're looking good and i think you know if you're if you're not quite liking the handling that could be the next step for you but i think you are going to like what this is going to be doing for you so um, so it's not gonna no yeah you're getting or... right because you're taking that and you're distributing, you're distributing it the and you're not on that one focal point physics right. can get in our way at that point you know so so right now i've just hooked everything up okay okay and now i'm ready to uh reattach our bars reattach. Yep. Should I lower this yeah i would lower let's get our coupler on for sure we we'll get our coupler on there first so for us once this is lined up with the ball mm -hmm. i get this locked in first yes sir so this gets locked in first yeah because we're going to want to raise it up and actually take that so tension off as well. Up right now, right? So it locks in. Right. Yeah. As soon as watch your fingers. Yeah. Right yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we need maybe go a little higher, a little lower. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Drop her down. Get that ball in there. Watch your fingers. Okay. Now it's in there. Perfect. There we go. Okay, so I needed to go down just a little yeah, bit. Yes, a little more. Okay. Awesome. Do Once I, I locked in. Right there, or do I go all the way down with it? Once you have that lock on that ball, you can raise it up and then raise the arm. Raise this whole thing up. Yes, right? sir. Otherwise, you're going to have that. You want to go the other way. We can keep going. Kind of just like we did when we were taking it off, right? Right. Taking that tension off. Otherwise, always that right. weight's gonna be on those arms for you. Right now we're we're pushing the weight of the trailer back and away from this point, right, Steven? Right, so we're raising it up as high as we can. Right. How's that? What do you think, Shane? A little, a little higher? higher? So you can so you, you'll be able to tell once you put the bar on there, if this is hard to get on, raise it up a little bit. Oh, if it's hard to get on. If it is gonna pop when you get on, you're gonna have to. So we're gonna we're gonna take this. Yep. And uh, go ahead and put our take our bottom piece in first. The bottom piece goes in first. Try to find that right angle. Walk that up. You're going to we'll go to the second one. Second one for now. Let's say the horse is in there. Okay. And then just sit on that bottom hook. Wait, how'd you go in? Oh, the bottom on that hook. bottom one. Yeah. Okay, great. And then you'll and need that. Gonna, am I gonna use it right here? Yes, like sir. That? You're going to hear a clank. There you go. Perfect. You're locked in. Great. That was easy. Oh, yeah. And 
just like that. So the safety of this, again. Yep, is to keep this from unlatching out, right? So and you don't think the vibration, this is, I just wanna the, make We were kind of talking about earlier, it is a little loose, you know? I could see this being no fun. So if you want to, we could take care of that here in a second. Maybe okay, find you a cool. easy yeah, little no, pin. Great. Yeah. So after we have that out, now we're all latched in. We're all latched in and all we gotta do is actually put that weight back on by lowering our jack and, and seeing how she sits. Great, now I'm gonna lower it, right? Yes, sir. And this is all safety in there? It looks good to me. And then we have this, right? Yep. So when, oh, I see, I'm just gonna bring it all up. I need to get you a new clevis too there, Steve. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I would know if that wasn't in place. It's great. There you got it. Yes, sir. So, can I drive with this connected? Um, or take it off? I think a lot of people do, but you know, it's always one of one more thing can go wrong kind of thing. But I think you get it up all out of the way, you're never gonna have an issue with it. I wouldn't say. So I can leave it on your driveway. Yeah, all right. So it's going all the way up. Yes, sir. Great. We're there. I think we're there. And this goes through here. Right there. There we go. Boom. Awesome. And now we're working. Cool. There you go. That's it. Cool, we're man. Ready to go. Ready to go. Oh, this you guys have been great. Awesome, man. Yeah, cool. Definitely. Any other kind of questions or concerns you had about it, or? Yeah, I just want to make sure. Hopefully, the trailer's in good shape and yeah. the doors don't go flying off. That's and, always uh, a good thing. Shape. That's we're true. Good. That's we'll true. Good. All right, Stephen. Well, we're glad to help you again. If you have yeah. any other questions, I'll, you know I'll where we back. are. Appreciate All right. it. Thank, Thank you guys for watching.